The day after, uh, this was Monday. Monday was a crash day, so we were up very uh, bright and early to look after the children to let the parents lie in. And then uh, it was going to be my day in Ribchester, and instead of walking there, my uh, father was going to drop me off back at the Ribchester Arms again, um, and I would make my own way home via the bus. Because if you remember, I discovered that there was a bus uh, that went um, across uh, what's called Oak Bar Crossing, which is where um, Skipton Road crosses the road that goes to Ribchester. And so in, in one direction you have where we are uh, on the Skipton Road, the other direction is Skipton. And then uh, the sort of north-south uh, crossing point, you've got Ribchester North and Blackburn South. And uh, I did know that there was a bus that went that way from Ribchester to Blackburn because that was where I sheltered when I uh, was calling the cavalry. So I uh, began my time in Ribchester by um, following the signs for a place called Stid Gardens. <coughs> Which I thought might be a nice sort of sort of park or something, um, and I followed it, uh, and the sign sort of went out of the back of the town, uh, and when the sign started being um, following roads which were um, clearly little country lanes that just went on and on, I decided that it was probably a wild goose chase and that Stig Gardens were probably nowhere near Ribchester um, and I gave up on that one. Uh, so returning to the town centre I then um, discovered the, uh, the church. St Wilfrid's Church is built upon the um, the what were the headquarters of the um, fortress. There is nothing left of the fortress except uh, some earthworks on the far side, which I noticed. Um, the church itself is uh, very, very delightful indeed. It's a Saxon church, so it's sort of uh, narrow, has no transepts, um, and uh, it looks more like a sort of um, more like a house, really, because uh, the windows at the top of the sort of uh, Saxon-style churches are sort of arched, more like you'd find on the front of a uh, um, a gable in a a, a normal house. So uh, I went in and had a look around there because that was open uh, and then I discovered where the actual museum was. Now the museum is very very small um, but it's uh, well worth the money. It is literally jam packed with um, information uh, so it is absolutely worth going and the people that run it um, were able to talk to me uh, for quite some time about it um, because I was their first visitor of the day uh, and so they weren't sort of rushed off their feet and it was very good being able to talk to it about somebody who sort of knew um, a bit about the uh, the area for example that the river crossing that they were defending <coughs> has been missing because the uh, river around Ribchester itself has changed uh, its pathway, um, altered its course and so nobody quite knows uh, where uh, this river crossing was supposed to be. The other issue is of course that some of the fort, or some of what would have been the fort, is in the river now because of that change of course uh, and a lot of the town is buried underneath the town at the moment. The thing is that Ribchester, like places like York for example, 
have been inhabited 100% of the time uh, all the way through and so rather than their um, old ruins being able to sort of decay away on the surface they're either completely knocked down or they're actually built over and that's the issue um, with archaeology in areas that have been settled continuously is that you have to dig below modern day structures that are already there to find out what came before because they've literally built up on top of um, uh, the other structures they haven't just abandoned them um, if they abandon them, you see they're still on the top. They're still on the surface, in whatever sort of decrepit form they have, you know, managed to exist in. After that, I uh, walked around to have a look at the um, Roman baths, which were a bit of a disappointment because they were really just a floor plan only. Um, that was the bit where it was a bit muddy to get to. Uh, I did also see the um, the city, the Civic Cenotaph, which was nice. Uh, then I decided that I was going to have lunch in a place called Potter's Barn, which is an old barn, um, two layers, and upstairs they sort of occasionally make pottery and do pottery classes and stuff like that. Downstairs is a, um, a little cafe. Uh, so I had lunch there. Then I caught the bus, and the bus, as I was explaining to you before, goes across Oak Bar Crossing, uh, and so it drops me off literally at the crossing, and I have to walk from the crossing back. And as I was walking back, um, the heavens opened, and uh, it was hailing. It was it was raining. It was everything. And I got very wet and cold very very quickly, um, a lot quicker than I had expected to. And so when I was passing Tiggis, which is a little bit before uh, the house here, um, in the direction of uh, Oak Bar Crossing, um, I went in there, and they obviously felt that I was so wet and cold that when I ordered a, a pot of tea they told me I could have it on the house which was very nice so I sat there uh, doing my administration um, enjoying my cup of tea for a long period of time uh, before walking home <laughs> um, <coughs> so um, yeah Monday um, afternoon I was mainly in the hot tub you know being in the hot tub is lovely I do like it but um, it highlights sort of being alone again you can't really read in a hot tub because uh, the spray gets everywhere um, so you just have to sort of sit there and it's fun sitting there and relaxing it is but it's better if you have somebody to talk to while you're doing it um, so the solo one was not quite as good uh, as I thought it was going to be, to be totally honest. Um, now, I'm just looking at my little notes. Uh, we had bangers and mash for tea, and then uh, we all went down for more ping pong and snooker. Uh, 